very nice to see you again, Mr. Travis. Why, thank you, Hirsch. Please make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Madam, we'll be making a rather pushy entrance momentarily. <laughs> Might I get you something? No, thanks, Hirsch. As you wish. Um, uh, how is everything in the world of rock and roll? <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Excellent. I trust the doors are doing well. <laughs> well, they, uh, uh, they broke up. Oh, I didn't know that. We get so little news around here. You call those eggs soft-boiled. Oh. Did you enjoy your breakfast, madam? The coffee was like mud. Rather cool mud. Yes. Well, there's only so much one can do. <laughs> Would you like some cool mud, Mr. Travis? Uh, no, no, thank you. Oh, no, please, I insist. I would like a witness to the fact that this man is attempting to poison me. Yes, please, coffee would be fine. Coffee. Right away, Hirsch. Oh, as fast as my little feet will carry me. <laughs> so, how are things in the world of rock and roll? Pretty good, pretty good. Mm, yes. I notice you have a knack for spending my money. Well, we have a new lobby. Very impressive. And some long-suffering employees have received much-deserved raises. And you, no doubt, feel very pleased with yourself about that. Santa Claus versus the Wicked Witch of the North. I am merely doing the job I think I should be doing. Oh, don't be so modest. You kept the union out of my station in return for my money. Not for myself, for the station. Oh, yes, yes, for the station. Never, never, never for yourself. Tell me, Mr. Travis. Are you as nice as you seem to be? <laughs> Mrs. Carlson, why am I here? Why, to discuss our mutual interest in the success of a radio station. Well, I mean, the bigger my investment, the bigger my involvement. Of course, we would be delighted to have you participate more fully. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> Miss Carlson, why don't you just leave it to me? Trust me. Oh, impossible, Mr. Travis. While I do have a certain amount of confidence in you, I trust no one but my own son. And I always trust him to do the wrong thing. <laughs> Unless, of course, the subject is fish. Show my son a mackerel and his mind becomes a computer. What is it that you wish to do? Uh, uh, participate on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, of course not. My business interests are too far flung for that. What I have done instead is hire the services of a professional radio consultant. A, a station doctor, I believe they're called. This man is from New York, and I believe that he can evaluate WKRP with an unbiased eye. Where have you been? <laughs> Mardi Gras, madam. <laughs> May I pour? Yes. Have you a shovel? <laughs> oh, madam. I'll race the card. <laughs> Uh, sugar? Hirsch, you've been with me 42 years. Have I ever once taken sugar in my coffee? Then cream? I take it black. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> I'm not so sure that a consultant is a good idea. Well, your operation can bear scrutiny, can't it, Mr. Travis? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Cream and sugar? Uh, cream. Uh, when is this consultant due in town? Oh, he's already here. He's been monitoring the station for several days. Good, good, good. And you'll be wanting to see the station and meet uh, the gang tomorrow, if that's convenient for you. I ought to be getting back to the station then, shouldn't I? I would think so. Goodbye, Mrs. Carlson. Goodbye. Hirsch, thank you so much for the coffee. Catch you later. Please do. I believe I have put the cat among the pigeons. Yes, ma'am. Why, Hirsch, this coffee's delicious. Mm-hmm. That's because we were having a guest, madam. <laughs> when it's just you and me, I prepared a little differently. <laughs> Yeah, 
Don't you see? It is perfect. For a week, Les does a special report. Les Nessman takes a look at prostitution. Three times a day, eight, two, and four, Hooker City. Now, is that great or am I losing my touch? Herb, I don't think. Television stations do it all the time. Every time it's a rating period, they pick some lurid subject like prostitution or lo loose housewives. <laughs> How about that? Les Nessman takes a look at loose housewives. It's a dream come true. What do you think, Les? I was thinking about doing something on the state legislature. Oh, break my heart, Les. The state legislature doesn't care about the state legislature. Come in. Hi. Hi. Uh, can we talk? Oh, you bet, yeah. I suppose you want us to leave as usual. No, Herb. I want you to stay right here. Yes, sir. Okay, Andy, what's up? <laughs> Your mother has hired a consultant to look at our operation. Where? He's here now. Here? No, right, right here? Well, no, not in the station. He's here in town. Oh, well, then don't panic. I, mean, I know what to do about this. Sure, next week, I'll just take a little vacation, take Herb and Les with me. Maybe Johnny, too. You can never tell what he's going to do. Wait a minute. You just can't clear out the station. Why not? Just bring him here, introduce him to Jennifer. She'll wink at him a couple of times, and he goes home. <laughs> Listen, what if he is a she? Well, then you wink at him. Will you handle it, Travis? You think of something. I, I, just make everything work out beautifully. Can we come out now? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, man. Come on out of there. You know, Mr. Carlson, I've been thinking, and I think... Come on, Les, let's do some brainstorming. Andy, I don't want to do the prostitution thing. Come on. What? Good morning, Andy. Oh, hi, uh... A man called for you this morning. He said he is a radio consultant. Oh, yeah. Hey, I know this guy. He used to work for me in Albuquerque. Oh, thank you. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. <laughs> Postcard? No, honey. Send a telex. And then call Fred Joyner. Hold on. Come in! Hey! Andy? Ah! <laughs> no, How you doing? Good. How you been, man? Good. Come on in. Whiskey and wine there. Ah, uh, you got a beer? In the fridge. Well, you want one? I'm drinking wine. Excuse me. Yeah, call Fred Joyner and tell him I think I can help him out. And I'll see you on Friday. LaGuardia. That's right. You look great, man. You look great. Last time I saw you, you had hair down to your waist. Hey, we all did. Didn't you have a ponytail? Uh, no, it was kind of a page boy thing. <laughs> That's right. Here's to you. Yeah. Well, I read big things about you in the trades. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Big. A consultant. A programmer. Yeah, I'm uh, programming about 45 stations now. Can you believe that? How's the station of yours? Mm. It's good. Good, good, good. Yeah? I figured with you running it. Yeah. What do you got there? Now, well, there's a couple of guys you might have heard of. Johnny Carabella. Professor Sunshine. Now, now it's Dr. Johnny Fever. <laughs> I like that. Fever. <laughs> what is he, doing late night for you? Uh, no, early morning drive. Uh-huh. And I got Venus Flytrap. Oh, yeah, the guy with the gong from New Orleans? Well, he doesn't use a gong much anymore. I thought he was uh, soft jazz, a lot of chatter. No, it's all rock, uh, very little talk. Well, we got some talk, uh, probably more than a lot of stations. Uh, little talk. Mm. Uh, what's your overall in the market? Uh, tenth. Ten. Ten? There are only 23 stations in the market. AM and FM. You know, Nora, I would have thought maybe you'd have checked into some of this before you came down here. Yeah, I'm just asking. Mm-hmm. You've been, uh, monitoring our station. Couple of days. And? That newsman of yours. Has he got some sort of problem with pigs? <laughs> <laughs> no, what he does, he likes to kid around a lot. You know, puts a little humor into his broadcast, talks a lot about pigs, uh, mispronounces words on purpose, but he's a pro. And I gotta admit, I've never quite met anyone like him. <laughs> How many salesmen you got? One. 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 It's a tight budget. I know it's wrong. One guy. He must be working 24 hours a day. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, Herb is going to kill himself. One of these. <laughs> Andy, you got problems here. I can tell that just listening. Really? How do you mean? Take fever in the morning. Yeah? He's late night at best. And he's playing solid gold. That's crazy. No, he plays just a little gold. Andy, the man is stuck in 1962. What is he, Ray Charles' uncle or something? <laughs> All right, look, Norris, I will admit that I got some problems here. 
But uh, you and I, we go back a little bit. I don't think I have to bring up the fact that... Uh... I know, yeah, you gave me my first job in radio. Look, let's relax. We'll talk about this later, huh? You want to do a line or two? <laughs> no, thanks. Come on, relax. I don't do coke. This is a small town you got here. Well, there's plenty of coke around this town. I just don't like uh, sticking money up my nose so I can feel lousy later. You're mad at me, right? I'm not mad at you, Norris. You just don't seem like the same guy. Are you jealous? I'm not jealous. I want to know. I want to know what you think. I don't like your sound. Your format is all over the road. I gotta be honest with you. Thanks. See you back at the station. Hey, hey, whoa, where are you going? No, no, I gotta go clean off the top of the desk, clean out the trash cans, get everything in order for your inspection, Norris. Andy, if you want a good report, I'll give you a good report. Good God, I haven't changed that much. You're a friend. I came to see you anyhow. I wanted to ask you to subscribe to my service. There it is. Yeah. I don't want to inspect you. We don't use a service, Norris. You want to know the truth? The jocks program the music. What? Yeah. And what they don't do, I do. Andy, nobody is programming their own music anymore. We are. And that's the way it's going to stay. Hey, you won't be nice to me. How can I be nice to you? I'll see you uh, Thursday at the station. I want to come tomorrow, Travis. Thursday. Read my lips. Okay. Thursday. What are you going to do? Fix a station in a day? What are you doing here? Oh. I was just uh, waiting for Venus to get off the air. It's going to fix my refrigerator. What's wrong with it? I don't know. It broke down a couple of months ago. <laughs> What's problem? There's this guy in town. Hey, how you doing? There's this guy in town. Uh-huh. A radio doctor, a consultant. He's working for Mother Carlson. Well, that's it for us, then. Mr. Norris Breeze, you heard of him? Oh, yeah. He's in town as a consultant, but what he really wants to do is sell us his service. Oh, no. That's right. We buy his service. He will give us a good report. No services, please. I know that. I know it. But he's just going to kill us with this report, that's all. Come on, you think Mama is going to fire her own son? What am I saying? Of course you would. <laughs> Les will be out in a second. Herb's a foregone conclusion. Don't you think we could get everybody to shape up at least for one day? <laughs> what am I saying? We're going to have to do something. Travis, it doesn't matter what we do. If we don't buy the man's service, he's going to give us a bad report. That's the deal. That's how it works. I guess so. Well, hello. I'm Norris Breeze. Oh, Mr. Breezy. <laughs> We've been expecting you. Would you like to sit down? We have all kinds of chairs. There's one over there, and there's another one over there. And that, no, that's a clock. <laughs> I'm here to see Mr. Carlson and uh, Mr. Travis. Well, then get up, and let's go see them. <laughs> You're very attractive, but... Uh... Uh, Breeze, uh, Norris Breeze. Uh, hello, Mr. Breeze. Uh, have a seat. I'll be with you in a second. What exactly is it that you do, Mr. Breezy? I consult with station owners on how to improve their profits. I also program all the music for 45 rock and roll stations. You see, I listen to how music. How nice. You know, I think I'll just go get everybody some coffee. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Carlson, your uh, reception. Get a second, uh, please. All right, here's the contract on the Rayco drugstore. Just set it on the pile, Herb. I, I gotta get some sleep, just an hour's worth. Uh, Herb, have you met uh, Norris Breeze, the consultant? Ah, Mr. Breeze. Norris. Norris. Uh, maybe we ought to talk to him while we've got him alone? Right. Yeah. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> Where's the coffee? saying, oh, uh, we've got to get a programming service in here like yours. Really? Really. I mean, our, our format's a mess. Mm. Travis really doesn't know what he wants. Right. Don't... Oh, hiya, Norris. Meeting the gang, are you? Yes, I mm -hmm. am. Mm -hmm. Look, I gotta be going. Norris, it's been real. I'm sorry we couldn't talk more. No problemo. Problem. <laughs> nice meeting you. Don't forget what I said. Right. Mm. 
Jennifer. Please, all right? <laughs> No, thanks. Coming up. <laughs> and this is the bullpen, as we call it. Mm. This is Bailey Quarters here. She's in charge of traffic, continuity, promotions, and uh, some news reporting. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Let's see what Les Nessman is up to. Well, Ben Bradley at the Washington Post is a good man. Well, sure, he makes some mistakes, but he's a good man. Uh-huh. She does traffic and continuity? Uh, yeah, uh, Les will be off the phone in just a minute. I'd like to speak with her. Okay, she's really kind of shy. I'd like to speak to her. Okay. Alone. Hi. Hi. You enjoy your work here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, uh, ever do any drugs? When? <laughs> like, on the job? Sit down. I want to tell you something. What? 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 Well, you're going to tell me something. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> You control the paperwork at the station. Oh, yeah. If you have any paper, you just bring it to me. <laughs> I would also love some M&Ms. Mr. Breeze, Les Nessman. I understand you find my news reports unusual, humorous. Thank you very much. It's a rock station, so I enjoy kidding around. <laughs> Unless it's hard news, then, of course, I go for it. Excuse me. <laughs> N-E-S-T-L-E-S, Nestle's makes the very best job. <laughs> Garful. <laughs> Remember that guy? The dog. <laughs> Norris, uh, what do you want to see now? Your mother. My mother? Carlson's mother. <laughs> now, if I may move on to the next point, a station should have a sound that is consistent. And this is achieved simply by playing the same basic records over and over again. Mr. Travis knows this, but for some reason he's not doing it. Why, Mr. Travis? Oh, no, just sort of worked out that way. <laughs> Mrs. Carlson, WKRP in Cincinnati is, in my opinion, a loony bin. Go on. I think changes are in order. Drastic, immediate changes. How so? Uh, to begin with, your son is doing a fine job. He is. But he's overworked. He is. The same goes for Herb Tarlick. It does. An excellent man who's trying to do it all himself. Really? The staff is a different matter. Bailey Quarters cannot be trusted with even the simplest of tasks for reasons I just assume not go into. And the uh, receptionist, what's her name? Uh, Jennifer Marlowe. Is certainly beautiful, but has the IQ of a piece of furniture. I see. Total airhead. <laughs> But this is minor alongside the racial unrest that exists between the disjunct. I think you should know that Venus Flytrap is armed. There is a knife. I see. And Les Nessman. Funny. A kidder, but articulate and professional to the bone. And uh, Mr. Travis here. An old friend of mine. An excellent radio man. But I'm sorry to say, a little naive. Naive? Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Breeze. Would you mind waiting outside for a second while I talk to Mr. Travis? Yes, I have some recommendations about these uh, people. Thank you, Mr. Breeze. We will be talking later. Of course.
You are a very, very bad boy. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of hard to get to know people in one day. I remember That's the first That's enough. Time. Hush! Yes, madam? You've been eavesdropping. Oh, no, madam. Very handy, as usual. Yeah. Would you kindly escort Mr. Travis to the door? And watch him very carefully. Make sure he doesn't steal the doorbell. <laughs> yes, madam. Gonna need some more money. Out. Out. I've overspent on the lobby. Out. We'll talk later. Go. <laughs> Hirsch. One dry vodka martini, stirred, not shaken. Served in a peanut butter glass. 